In social situations, people get a kick if something is lost in translation. But what happens if it affects your business? Karna Kovovic is the co-founder and owner of Language.io, and welcome to the Language of Business. Thank you, Greg. Great to be here. Why is communication so important for a business? I can think of three different reasons at the top of my head. Uh, revenue, obviously, is one of them. It's uh, generally understood that people buy what they can read. So if you can provide information in the language of your customers, they're going to buy more. Secondly, customer experience. If you can provide information, content, website content, customer support, marketing material, etc., in the language of your customer, they're going to be a much happier customer. So a much happier customer means they're going to talk about you in their own markets and you're going to again get more revenue. It's also a cost reducer actually. So if you provide for instance customer support in the language that your customer speaks, they're going to have less need to come back to you because they didn't understand what you were trying to help them with. What happens if it's a domestic business? Well, a domestic business, if you look at the U.S., you have about 30 million people in the U.S. that speak Spanish as their first language. So if you actually want to address that market, you want to target that market, you need to provide this kind of information to them in Spanish. When things go wrong, what are the implications? A lot of different things. Um, if you, for instance, provide some language support, um, you may, but it's not good language support, you may actually create a really bad experience for a customer and they're going to talk about you negatively in that particular market and it'll be hard to get past that. If you provide no language support whatsoever, um, imagine that you want to buy a t-shirt, um, say from a Japanese company. And that entire transaction is going to have to happen in Japanese. Now, granted, if you speak Japanese, that's fine. But if you don't, are you likely to buy a T-shirt from that company compared to if you're buying from someone that provides all of this, the entire transaction in the language that you speak? And when you get it right? A lot more happy customers, which means a lot more revenue. Look at one of our customers, for instance, a local global company here in Massachusetts. They provide customer support in over 19 different languages with the help of our software. And they have actually lowered their customer support costs with over 41% because they provided translated self-help for their customers on their website. So their customers could go there and search for help themselves in the language that they speak. What's the difference between a happy customer versus a non-complaining customer? A happy customer is likely to be a repeat customer. They're going to come back, they're going to recommend you to all of their friends, their families, etc. A non-complaining customer just had a so-so customer experience. They're not going to come back. You're not going to get any additional revenue from them. Why doesn't Google Translate the ideal solution? So Google Translate is awesome for, for instance, getting a gist for something when you don't understand that particular language. But it is not the ideal method for you know, communication, professional communication with the customer. Um, you've probably used Google Translate yourself, so you know how it can mess up at times. So if you want to have a professional conversation or communication with one of your customers, you need to use professional human translation or a combination of machine, good machine translation and professional human translation to get that perfect interaction with your customer. How is Language.io trying to bridge the gap? So we've built a very uh, sophisticated translation brokering engine that will broker translation requests between a customer and the company that they're trying to communicate with so that the customer support agent, for instance, actually becomes fluent in over 150 languages with a simple click of a button, even though they don't speak that language. Our product brokers the translation between the customer and the company by using you know, machine translation. Google Translate is one of the you know, tools that we use, but we also use professional human translation and more sophisticated translation engines. You've been involved with the industry for decades. What keeps you up at night about changes? I get frustrated at times when I see companies that don't realize the potential that they have by targeting international markets and by also thinking that you know, if we just provide this in English, everyone will come. It doesn't work like that. That's one of my frustrations. There's a lot of excitement that keeps me awake as well. Uh, you know, seeing where the industry is heading, seeing the, the various tools that are popping up that we can use, and also you know, solving the problems for our customers to help them target and grow globally with some very simple means. Of all of the languages you speak, which is your favorite one? Swedish. 
because it's your native tongue? Yeah, probably. I kind of like English as well. I think I'm doing fairly well with it. But, you know, sw Swedish and English, they, either one. I dream, actually, in both languages. Karna, thank you. Thank you. Karna Kavoga, co-founder and owner of Language.io here in Salem, Massachusetts.